The brain, it has its own set of nerves to our body. There are 12 of these cranial nerves, and they vary in terms of what kind of neurons they contain. I mean, it's important to know the autonomic and somatic nerves, but let's be real, exams love cranial nerves. Actually, it's because some of our cranial nerves carry motor fibers that control voluntary functions, like moving your eyeballs away from certain people. And others carry only sensory fibers, which relay data to and from the sensory organs. So which ones are where, and what exactly do these 12 nerves actually do? As masterminds, we have to keep track of the human highway diagram that is formed by our cranial nerves. Since all 12 of these cranial nerves are important, we're going to have to come up with some kind of mnemonic to help keep track of both their names and their functions. We'll also need to know whether it's a sensory nerve, motor, or both. The map we'll follow will be based on a ventral view of the brain, looking at its underside, with the anterior side at the top, the posterior on the bottom, the cerebellum, the spinal cord, the medulla, the pons and midbrain, and the infundibular stalk. So all these nerves, how are you going to remember them all? We'll follow this fun and easy mnemonic. O once one takes the anatomy final. Very good vacations start happening. Trust me, it's true. Also, it's important to know if it's sensory, motor, or both. We'll remember this by... Some say marry money, but my brother says big brains matter more. Let's start with our first cranial nerve. O. Olfactory nerve. Here in yellow, we draw the olfactory bulb on top of the cribriform plate. It's at the ethmoid bone. Here the nerve receives smelling sensations of perfume and it's made from the factory, and it goes into our nasal cavity and transmits this sensory info to the brain. The olfactory nerve, from our mnemonic, SUM, meaning just sensory. Now the second cranial nerve, O once, the optic nerve. This nerve uses its photoreceptors in the retina, which bring visual information to the brain. Simply the function is vision. Some say, optic nerve is also only sensory. Cranial nerve 3 arises from the midbrain, O11, the ocular motor nerve. Oculo is something to do with the eye, and motor is for the movement of the eye, and it also supplies most of the muscles of the eyeball. We'll look at the superior and inferior rectus muscle for the movements of upwards and downwards, medial rectus muscle, inward, and the inferior oblique muscle for upwards and outwards movement. Please note here that it doesn't do down and inward, which is actually done by our next cranial nerve, number 4. Ocular motor functions to provide eye movement. For example, to test the accommodation reflex, the patient looks at the pen, and the pupils they constrict and move inward. Some say marry. Ocular motor, as its name suggests, is motor. I want you to keep SO4, LR6, REST3 in your minds. We'll come back to it. Cranial nerve number four, O once one takes, which is the trochlear nerve. It arises from behind the midbrain. And all you have to remember is that it supplies the eyeball muscle, superior oblique, which depresses and laterally rotates the eyeball. The trochlear nerve, some say marry money, is motor. For now, we'll skip cranial nerve 5 so we can complete all our eye nerves. Cranial nerve 6, O11, takes the anatomy. It's the abducens nerve. You know when someone has abs, we call it a six pack. Cranial nerve 6, abducens. It arises from the pons and it does abduction. The abducens nerve controls the last muscle of the eye, which is the lateral rectus muscle. When you look side to side, you're abducting the eyes to an extreme position left and right. Abducens nerve. Some say marry money, but my, it's motor. Remember that we said SO4, LR6, REST3. SO4, SO refers to the superior oblique muscle, cranial nerve 4, trochlear, LR6, lateral rectus muscle, cranial nerve 6, abducens. And the rest three just means all the rest of the eye muscles are cranial nerve three, ocular motor. 
So really all you need to remember is SO4 and LR6. Coming back to number 5, O11 takes the, the trigeminal nerve. Go ahead and touch your forehead, touch your cheek, and clench your teeth. When you do this, it kind of makes a triangle. And cranial nerve 5 is trigeminal. Triangle. Trigeminal. This nerve is huge, and it originates from the pons in the midbrain, and it has three big branches. The trigeminal nerve is responsible for most of the sensory facial sensation, and each branch is particular. For instance, V1 is the ophthalmic nerve for the area of the eye. V2 is the maxillary nerve responsible for the maxillar area. And V3 is the mandibular nerve for the area around the mandible. Remember that the trigeminal serves the sensory component of the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. Also, its motor component is for the muscles of mastication, such as your temporal muscles, masseter, and the lateral medial pterygoid. These muscles are supplied by the V3 component of the mandibular nerve. Remember that the trigeminal nerve, some say marry money, but is both motor and sensory. Now seven, O11 takes the anatomy final, the facial nerve, and his nuclei are found at the pons. Facial nerve, draw out a smiley face. Now with the smiley face, go ahead and stick out your tongue and smile. Facial expression and tongue, this is number seven. This nerve acts on the muscles of facial expression and also supplies the digastric and stylohyoid muscles around the neck region. The facial nerve supplies taste for the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. It also supplies all the glands for secretions in the face, such as submandibular, sublingual, nasal, but it does not supply the parotid gland. However, in dissection, facial nerve passes right below the parotid gland. A cool way to hook this nerve to memory is to remember you have two ears, two eyes, one nose, one mouth, and one tongue. So that's seven facial features. So you can see that the facial nerve, some say marry money, but my brother is both motor and sensory. We have cranial nerve eight. O11 takes the anatomy final, very, the vestibular cochlear nerve. It's found at the pontomedullary junction. It supplies the vestibule, the semicircular canal, and the cochlea. And it's concerned with static and dynamic equilibrium for maintaining your balance and your hearing. Try to remember this, that the vestibule and the cochlea are parts of the ear, and this vestibulo cochlear is in charge of hearing. The vestibular cochlear nerve, some say marry money, but my brother says is sensory. Coming to our ninth cranial nerve, O11 takes the anatomy final, very good, it's the glossopharyngeal nerve. You see how it's such a long word? It took you literally nine minutes to say it. Glossopharyngeal. It originates from the medulla and supplies specifically the parotid gland. So seven does all the glands except parotid, which is done by nine. Glossal refers to doing taste and sensory to the posterior one third of the tongue. And pharyngeal is for its action on the pharynx and the stylopharyngeus muscle. You need to know that the glossopharyngeal nerve initiates the gag reflex and has a motor component to the gag reflex along with our vagus nerve. The glossopharyngeal nerve, some say marry money, but my brother says big is both. The big guy, cranial nerve 10. O11 takes the anatomy final, very good vacations, the vagus nerve. So you're going on vacation. You're traveling from the medulla and you stop in Vegas to defecate and clear your anus. This is all very slow and can only happen when you're resting. A parasympathetic response. And it's opposite to our sympathetic response of fight or flight. You can't be stopping to use your anus when you're running away from a dog. The vagus nerve primarily acts on the GI system and slows down your heart rate. 
It's a primary motor and sensory nerve for most organs of the body, such as the heart, the lungs, and the GI system, and many others. And it's automatic, so you're not thinking much of how to move your food down your esophagus, stomach, and eventually the anus. So slow down your beating heart, you're in Vegas, and time to use your anus. The vagus nerve. Some say marry money, but my brother says big brains. You guessed it, both. I don't know what nerve is number 11. Oh, once one takes the anatomy final, very good vacation start, the spinal accessory nerve. You're shrugging your shoulders and tilting your head. I don't know, this is the spinal accessory. Located in the medulla and a spinal portion coming from the spinal cord. It supplies the sternocleidomastoid muscle for flexion of the neck and for contralateral head rotation. It also supplies the trapezius muscle for elevation and retraction of the scapula. So remember, spinal accessory supplies for the movement of these two muscles. To say, I don't know. The spinal accessory, some say marry money, but my brother says big brains matter. It's only motor. It's such a hot day. It's 112 degrees out and you're having your 12th ice cream cone. Cranial nerve 12. O once one takes the anatomy final. Very good vacation start happening. The hypoglossal nerve from our good friend Medulla. So you don't want this 12th ice cream of yours to melt. You're licking it up. And this is exactly what this nerve does. It supplies the intrinsic muscles and the extrinsic muscles which are say grace honey, styloglossus, genioglossus, and hyoglossus muscle. Always remember that the exceptions are always exam questions. The palatoglossus muscle is supplied by the vagus nerve. Simply put, the hypoglossal nerve allows you to talk and move the tongue around. Hypoglossal, some say marry money, but my brother says big brains matter more. It's only motor. This was just a quick look at the cranial nerves and cues to remember them by. Don't stress, just watch this video a couple of times. You got this. Thanks for watching. And remember to click subscribe below and check out our Instagram page at rev.med. If you're enjoying these videos, please hit the subscribe button to your right. Stay up to date with our diagrams, Q&A, and more on Instagram. And also, please support us on Patreon. Lots of blessings from RevMed.